thank you so much for being willing to talk about your life as an activist a little bit. So I'd like to start out with just the first question is, what events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? For me, uh, I'm a fourth generation fisherwoman. Uh, my family has been on this area on the Gulf Coast for around 130 years. So I am very fortunate to, uh, to be one of these people that have spent my entire life with generations of my family being fishermen in one place so I can, uh, I remember one time a, uh, an attorney told me, because I had never heard it, he said, uh, he said what amazed him was that I had a sense of place. And, uh, and I think anyone who has been in a natural environment for a very long time, you do get a sense of place. I can remember, and probably the most, uh, I guess the event <laughs> that uh, really was the bottom of my foundation on what I believe and how I act is that when uh, you know when when you're a fisherman and your dad is a fisherman and or a shrimper and your cousins and your uncles and your grandfather and and everybody that your life is around the bay and around the docks and around the boats and around the nets and uh, so we were always that was the one place we we went we lived far out in the country and when we went anywhere we went to the bay we went to the water and uh, uh, I can remember uh, I was young as five years old and I could go to the bay and I could see her she was uh, she really was a woman she was an old woman and I know she had all this long gray hair and she and she had the personality of a grandmother and it just immediately uh, I knew she was a grandmother and she really liked me and I was one of seven kids in the middle you know working class people and you <laughs> don't get uh, a lot of personalized attention but that old woman really liked me and she just liked me coming to the bay and so I have never forgot that and I know when I went uh, shrimping with my dad and later when I ran my own shrimp boat, it's, um, it's almost a mystical thing because I could go out on the water and be on the boat and, and you're headed out and it's before, uh, before the sun is coming up. So it's, it's really quiet and beautiful. And I could literally, it felt like uh, the molecules in my in my body were separating and the wind and the water would get in the middle of them so you were like a streamless bit along with it so i have never lost that sense that the bay was real and it was alive and it had value and so, so everything that I have did, and it's like, it's almost like literally, I almost sometimes felt like it was my destiny because it fell to my lap. But it was my, my view of the water, um, my love of the bay, and being on a boat and being around fish and being around shrimp. I love the smell of it. A lot of people can't stand the smell around a fish out. I mean, I loved it. I loved that smell of seaweed. And uh, so that's where I got my inspiration. And that's why, because people are always asking me is, how come, uh, you know, I've been doing it for 30 years. I mean, like, it, it's my life. It's not, what I do isn't my regular life. I mean, it's, it's intertwined. And um, that's why I don't uh, burn out, uh, because it, feeds my soul and so when you got something that's feeding your soul <laughs> you don't you don't get burned out I mean you have bad days you know you can definitely have the dark night of the soul but you 
don't burn out because it's it is a part of who you are that is such a beautiful perspective. Thank you. So what continues to motivate you, maybe if that's not a repetitive question, to be an activist and what gives you courage? What guides you? I guess part of that is um, I think I'm a bit of a mystic and that was because of how I grew up. And, and, and I, don't, <laughs> I don't generally tell people, but uh, I, uh, I was raised as a holy roller, the religion. It's... <laughs> And so they're combined with the bay and, and the sense of the old grandmother. And then you get in a holy rolling religion where you got the Holy Ghost all over the place. You know, I'm, I'm no longer, I'm no longer that, but that upbringing. So you have a uh, kind of a big picture and you can't, you have a faith in the value of unseen things and when you when you have that it's 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 automatically that integrity of your person becomes the you know you know how like they measure a, a house you're building they have plums i've been told they have plums to tell whether you're off or not and it's like so my integrity is a plum and when it's off, I know when I need to correct it. So, so integrity is really important because it's not just a hobby. It's not just a cause. It is my journey. And, and, it, and it's all interwoven. It's so woven. I cannot tell where one thread begins and another ends. That's, uh, what a great description. That's beautiful. Um, so what advice do you have for youth activists? Well, their mama won't like this, but I, I really believe, I think we're all too comfortable. We're too polite. We're too well-behaved. I know I was, and it took... Uh, you know, when I first started going up against the companies, I believed agencies were going to do their jobs. I believed there were laws that were going to be uh, uh, administered to. I believe your elected officials were concerned and will do something. And that was probably the biggest illusion that burst in my whole career. And once I realized that, I realize that the standard way, especially in Texas, the standard way of doing things was not going to work. And they were going to take that bay if I didn't do something. So, so the petitions weren't working. The permit hearings weren't working. The meetings weren't working. And besides, I had no support down here. And, and they really thought I was a nutcase. And, uh, you know, a woman out there, official woman, you know, I started uh, doing what came from the heart, you know, and I didn't, I hadn't read about Gandhi then. I later read about Gandhi and he talks about the soul power, and, you know, and he talks about hunger fast as a soul power. It's a different type of energy. And uh, I remember when I started thinking outside the box and I did it spontaneously as like nothing was working. And I just I remember I told uh, a friend, I said, uh, I was going to do a hunger strike and I had never did a hunger strike. I didn't know about hunger strike. I didn't know what you did on a hunger strike. And he said, that was the craziest thing he ever heard. He said, people in Texas don't do hunger strikes. He said, in California, they might do hunger strike but not in Texas. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm doing one. And the thing was, I knew enough about myself then that if I did not move on that, if I slept on that idea, I would wake up morning and say, thank goodness I did not do that hunger strike. And so I immediately moved on the idea. I told a reporter I was doing a hunger strike and she said, when and I said right now, and so I moved on a um, gut instinct that probably came from my gut and my heart, and 
and believe it or not, that worked. And I, I if the extent that it worked almost made me believe, and I do believe it's like, it's like the key to the universe. It's like, if you put your intention and your focus and your commitment right there on the line, I believe you can create action. I do. It's happened for me for 30 years and I still do it. I know a lot of environmental, big environmental groups, they probably roll their eyes at uh, some of my my planet because it's just a gut instinct and intention. It's it's really an intention, but I do believe we are too well behaved. I think everybody gets good instincts and they back down off of them. And uh, a key sometimes to know that you are on a good instinct is you're afraid. That's the key. When you start being uncomfortable, it's like, Give that some thought. That is great advice for young people. And you're right, their mamas probably won't like hearing that. Oh. But, but I suspect there are some mamas out there that will be, yes, go for it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much.